Hello, and welcome to Beyond NSU. I'm your host, Tiana Burnett, and today we're talking to 2008 graduate from NSU, comedian and former member of the Spartan Legion, Miss Allison Moore. Surprise. Thank you for coming. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hey, thank you for having me. Okay, so first question. What made you choose to come to NSU? What other choice was it? <laughs> Period. Um, I am from Virginia, so I grew up in Hampton. Mm -hmm. So Norfolk State was already, you know, a school that... That you we, were already just going right, to Right, that we were looking after. You know, in, in my school, we loved Norfolk State University. So it was like a no-brainer. You know, the yeah. opportunity came, presented itself. I'm like, I'm in. They said yes to me, and we were best friends. All right, so uh, what was your major when you first came to NSU and like did it change well I feel like you um <laughs> I feel like you trying to uncover some stuff so my first <laughs> it's like well which time <laughs> mind your business just mind your business <laughs> anyway so okay so when I came as a freshman mm -hmm. and I first started my journey I started in elementary education don't mm -hmm. worry it it <laughs> it ain't like I can see the end of the day mm -mm. teacher was like you you might want to have patience and like kids, baby. I was like, oh, that's a requisite. Okay. So then um, when I started again, I did business management. So that was my major. And that's actually what I graduated in. Business management was my degree. All right. All right. So mm -hmm. how did NSU help you achieve some of your goals that you had? Ooh, I think that it was the preparation, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so my time at Norfolk State was really when I was transforming into a woman. You mm -hmm. know, while I was at Norfolk State, I started my family. And I so I had to pause. I got pregnant, pause school, came back. And I really built, feel like that Norfolk State gave me that community to make me feel like that I can do it. Because in, in real life, and as a, I got older and continued in the profession, real life happened right like yeah when y'all get out here in the real world you're gonna see it turns <laughs> it out you, you like can't. a bus listen here so you know with that opportunity where i got pregnant in college some family and different people mm -hmm. in the community was like oh dad we was rooting for it. we was all rooting for you girl but you got pregnant <laughs> but norfolk state gave me that space where i can come back to school we understand this is a situation we're not going to release our expectations for mm -hmm. excellence and i just had this community that that kept me moving forward and then I think that that was the biggest preparation for what I'm doing now professionally. Okay so you're also um, a comedian and an entrepreneur. Uh, what made you decide to become a comedian? You know I all my life I had to fight. <laughs> I don't think I wanted to become a comedian. I think comedian wanted to become me. Lord. So okay it kind of I don't know if I ever woke up one day and was like, I'm going to be a comedian. I've always been funny. And so I, would do, I was doing an event, hosting the event, and the audience, they were kind of like, you know, that girl is so funny. Girl, why are you not a comedian? And I'm just like, can you get paid? And everybody in the audience was like, yeah. That's a whole career. I was like, oh. <laughs> Dang, I didn't think about this. You know, I was getting in trouble in school growing up all the time. Mm -hmm. Turns out Miss Johnson had me in detention, <laughs> and I was honing my skills, you know. Didn't know. So, I don't know, I think it was more the personality piece and then my fearlessness when it came to the public speaking aspect and the performing aspect, just always like, Allison, could you do it? Could you, do, could you MC this? Could you, could you tell a joke? Could you? And that kind of gave me the like, wow, I like the response. So that's how I did the comedy. Did I go all around the bush for you enough? Yes. So told you I'm yes, you did. content. I am so you. we also know that you um, attended George Washington University and you got your master's. Yes, yes. Okay. So what was the deciding factor into getting your master's? So that was definitely so that I can move up in the, my, it was like my career trajectory type goal. Mm -hmm. So when I got my bachelor's degree, I went into human resources. So I left here in business, went into HR. So I was in HR and I'm like, well, how can I separate myself from being this specialist entry level? and get on that more leadership track, because I wanted to make more money, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I like to say it's because I'm so noble and I love leadership, but I, I just wanted to eat better foods. Yeah. So, and then I'm like, okay, well, there was an opportunity at my employer to go back and get my master's degree, you know, the education yeah. and re tuition reimbursement program. So I was like, all right, well, let's, let's keep it going. And so I got my master's degree in education and human development, and the program is human resources management. Okay, so. That's exciting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it is. Not everybody gets their master's. Okay, shout so, out to me. Not yeah, shout out to you. Much <laughs> but 
Uh, my question is, what was the success moment that you had when you finally realized, like, I'm making it. This is me. I, I'm a success now. Um, I'm still waiting on that. I'm still <laughs> waiting on that feeling. But thank you for speaking it <laughs> to my life because one day I'm going to believe it. But um, I think the moment for me when I'm like I'm on my path, I'm doing what I like to do was when I could set my own. I have autonomy. Mm -hmm. I can set my own how I'm dealing with my time. And then also my own money. So that kind of put me on this. This is the path to success. Yes. I'm building my own schedule. I'm making the money that I want to make. I, I like this. But I, I still got things that I want to accomplish. Yeah. Well, you know, that's great. You know, I'm going to be a long way from a success, <laughs> but you're a success. I mean, okay. So you were um, also involved with campus activities and stuff like that. Can you elaborate more on that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Yes, I'm glad you asked. So when I was here, I was and am a proud member of the Spartan Legion marching band. Mm -hmm. So I am a hot ice dancer. <laughs> ice, baby. So, yeah, so that took up a huge amount of my, my time, my focus. I was a total band girl. Like, even coming on campus, they were like, go by Scott Dozier Dunn. I was like, first of all, we did not call it that. It was Big Calf, Little Calf. <laughs> and I was the Little Calf with the band. <laughs> Okay, I was in band a little myself. Okay, you know? a, a little? A little bit, just a little bit, just a tad bit. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I played the clarinet, so I don't play no more. So let's, okay. Okay. <laughs> let's go past that. I'll focus, I'll focus. <laughs> okay, so now you went from comedy to corporate America. Yes. Why, why, why'd you do that? Like, what? Girl, I got kids. <laughs> First of all, spoiler, I didn't get famous. So I was like, well, I got to put these kids through college to get yeah. them the same opportunity I had. And so, no, but really... It was corporate, then comedy, now then back corporate. to corporate, right. So I, I finished school, got my bachelor's, went into human resources, then I started my edutainment company where I mix entertainment and education, so more laughing edutainment. My little niche is clean, inspirational type humor, right? I'm running that company for six years. I have a side business. I have a coffee company, Black Please Coffee. So I was doing my entrepreneurial okay. thing. But the problem is, I got ideas. I don't know how to make no money. So, you know, turns out in a business, you want to make money. Yeah. And so I was like, this little glorified hobby thing is cute. I'm popular, but no, girl. And so I created, started creating content. You know, one of the ways in which I did consulting for corporate America was I continued to support them in their human resources or in their communication efforts or for some of like their diversity content. And that kept me in relationships. And eventually I accepted a position to be director of communications for a bank, Optus Bank. It's a black-owned bank in South Carolina, so I'm really excited about that. Okay, so um, you ever think about coming back to NSU, doing, helping our generation um, become successful like you? By our generation, like how many generations in between mine and yours, though? I just, <laughs> just need to know. Uh, it, w one. Okay, okay. I was kind of <laughs> thinking we was close to the same. Um, <laughs> I just love the fact that you think I'm successful. You better hype my head up. Yes, on, you are a success. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, like doing things like this is super exciting for me and being able to share. I've had the opportunity. Dr. Carol Pratt, though, she's in, um, I think, the poli sci area department. So I go back and I do a lot of talks with some of her classes each semester. So I'm around a little bit for sure. And I appreciate the opportunities to kind of share with my fellow Spartans my journey so yeah call me what you want you want me to come back yeah okay, okay. <laughs> well, I got well that's all we have for today on today's episodes of beyond nsu thank you miss allison moore for thank joining you. us today i'm your host tiana thank you for watching and always behold the green and gold